from tree and shrub biology. This is basic, but it's but it's important. It's important that you know a little bit about the uh, biology of what you're working on. So the first thing I've got listed there is auxin. Auxin is nothing more than a chemical. It's a hormone that plants produce in the tip of a branch. That chemical has the effect of suppressing gro uh, lateral growth on this stem. Okay. If I took, if I cut that tip off right now, two or three months down the road, you're going to see growth from several of these buds on this on this stem. Here's and here's the living proof of how that works. Last year, a cut was made here, and what was the response? Vigorous growth here, 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 and here. So. The auxin inhibits this kind of growth until it's cut off. How does that affect what you do? Well, it, it, you, you would have something really bushy with stuff coming out all over, over the place without the auxin. With it, there's controlled growth like this, and we can control this as well. If next year or now, if I cut this off, and branches come out here, then they'll start making some cuts to thin out some of this stuff rather than just making a heading cut here. And this may be out of order, but I'll, I'll mention this as well. This is off of a pear tree. And you can, I don't know if you can see this or not, you can see by the branches that came out here that the branch structure and the buds are in an alternating pattern. But on this side, but on that side, but on this side, but on that side, versus this hydrangea, which has opposite buds, but here, but there, but here, but there. So you can see the difference in the cut. This hydrangea was dead at it here last year. This was the response. Brand new growth coming up from where the two buds were. This spring, brand new growth will shoot up from these two buds and these two buds. So when you cut back to a bud like that and you eliminate the tip, the response is new growth. Any questions about this? <laughs> so you have opposite branch pattern and bud pattern and alternate. These places where there are buds on the stems are known as nodes, N-O-D-E-S. The spaces between Internodes. I'll talk to you later about your cries. <laughs> so that's important to know as well. When you're making a heading cut, you want it to be just above a node, like these two, or like this was made right here. You're not always going to get the perfect response. Uh, maybe a, a deer comes along and munches one of the buds off of this, and you're just going to get one, one cane crawl. Or uh, this is, a, I think, a particularly vigorous uh, pear. Maybe on a slower growing one or one that was uh, not really healthy, you might only see two, two new stems come up. But it's important to know that when you eliminate the tip, you encourage lateral growth. That's the bottom line on that. Branch collar. If you're now doing tree work, this is important. For, for years, I think historically, not any time in the last 40 or so years, but in the past, pruning cuts were made. If a branch was removed, it would be taken off pretty much in a straight line, down like that. That's called a flush cut. Modern tree science lets us know that this is incorrect. This, there's a thing called branch collar, which is this bulge below and above where branches come out of the trunk. This will form uh, uh, long term on branches as well, with lateral branches, older ones. There are, again, trees are full of chemicals. There are chemicals in this branch collar zone that act as uh, uh, sealants. <coughs> they are what seal over the wound once you've made a pruning cut. When you make a flush cut like this, 
you take that off, and there's there's going to be an open. That's not going to steal over. So what you need to do instead of a flush cut is cut just outside the branch collar. Not real thick, but you get the idea. The tree can then seal over and what we would refer to as heal, but in the tree world it's called compartmentalization. They compartmentalize the wound. They seal it off from the rest of the tree. That will happen there with a good cut. So it's important to know the branch collar when you're, when you're doing tree pruning. And just as a, I don't know if I mentioned this in the notes, but as a way of dealing with a larger branch, if, it's, if it looks like it's too heavy for you to, to hold on to when you're making the cut, take a big chunk of it off before you make the final cut. So there's a, a three-step protocol in pruning large limbs. You would first make an undercut about a third of the way in. Or, and you'll know when you've gone far enough when the saw starts to bind. Your second cut is right above that undercut. And at some point when you're cutting through there, this will snap and fall off. What you're doing is saving. If you just went blindly cutting through this without making the undercut, there's a the good possibility that this branch, this bark, would tear and tear down the trunk of the tree. Again, creating a wound that wouldn't would be too big to, to uh, heal. So you've made your undercut, cut number one. The second cut is directly above that, and the third cut is at the branch top. If you've only got a foot or so here, and that's your final cut, you can just hang on to this one you saw through the final cut. So that's important to remember. The branch collars come out about an inch, two inch, whatever. Sometimes, sometimes they're very prominent. On older trees, they can be five inches or more, and they're they're really obvious. Lots of times, on younger trees, it's a it's a crapshoot to know where to make the cut. So it comes down quite often to experience. The best thing I can tell you is, well, use your best judgment. You don't want to cut into the trunk when you're taking a branch off. OK, enough about branch collars. So I think what I've got on the next page is about the notes. So we're already reviewing. Don't worry, there's not an exam. <laughs> Unless you're a landscape professional. Oh, that's right, there aren't. So to review, alternate, the buds are staggered. And, or they could be oppositely alternate, so they would, you might have one here and then, well, let's say one on the west side, one on the south side, one on the east side, one on the north side, sort of. But they're not directly across from each other. They're, it's an alternate node pattern, and these nodes at some point will turn into branches, so you could also say that it has an alternate branch pattern. Uh, pears and apples have alternate branch patterns. Maples. We'll talk about this in a minute, but maples have the opposite branch pattern. You can, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a branch there and a branch there right across from each other. So different plants have different branch patterns and different uh, node arrangements. Opposites are, again, north and west, and then east and south, northwest, east, south, and so on. So that's nodes and internodes.